Alright, this is Misha and we're doing a video today on Finnish Mosin Nagant type rifles. Now there are a bunch of variations of these, so we're only going to show you three, three that I have on hand, uh, three of the major ones, but uh, there's a couple of really excellent websites out there that have all kinds of neat production data, numbers, that kind of thing, as far as the history, and these are fascinating rifles for the collector. And it's, it's a Mosin, so let's get in. Up first is what the Finnish military called an M91. Now, Finland was basically part of Russia, part of the Russian Empire, until it fought for independence in 1917 and became independent in 1918. So once they got the Russians out and had complete autonomy, they had a ton of Mosins on hand. And the leftovers from the, the Russians and, and whatnot. They also had a bunch of Mausers and other random stuff from World War One. What they did is they, they traded off all their Mausers, at least as many as they could throughout the 1920s for yet more Mosins, getting Mosins from countries that wanted to use the Mauser in Eastern Europe and had tons of Mosins left over from World War II. And so that they swapped Mausers for Mosins in addition to all the Mosins that they had. And their reasoning was, and it made a lot of sense, they wanted to have a rifle that used a lot of the same parts they already had on hand, but more importantly, they would fire the same cartridge as their number one uh, antagonist to Russia. So, they wanted something that would fire the 7.62 by 54 rimmed. And that's what they got in, you know, keeping the Mosin around. Well, initially they just used 1891 Russian Mosins. But, as the, as the time wore on, you know, guns wore out, and they and the Finns had a very high standard for accuracy and precision. They started reworking and tinkering, and that's eventually what led to the M91 Mosin. Now, this one here is dated 1942, so it was reworked in in World War II. Most of these came out of Tikhonovsky. Now, what they did that made it different, they installed a new and I know you can't really see a whole lot of it because of the handguard, but they installed a heavier barrel. There was a little better made, a little tighter made, better accuracy. To do that, they also had to redo the front part of the wooden stock. And you'll see a splice. Oh, I think it's around here on this one. They basically grafted on a heavier front section of the stock to accommodate the thicker barrel. They also slightly reworked the sights. Not a huge difference from a standard 91 on this particular model, but they did tinker with them a bit, try to get us a little bit better out of them. Still using the same basic cleaning rod. Upper hand guard is essentially unchanged. Another big difference are the sling swivels. They filled in the actual slots and went to these rotating wire types so it could accommodate any kind of sling. Now, not, not all of them will have it. Again, you'll get in a lot of uh, variations in Finn Mazins, and there's there's um, not just a ton of standardization, but these uh, wire sling swivels. They also smoothed out the bolt and uh, reworked the trigger. You know, very, very little take up. Very crisp break. So for a Mosin trigger, this is phenomenal. They also tinkered with the magazine feed a bit, got it out. The biscuit is kind of detailed that went over it, tuned it up. Now, they so they were rebuilding 1891s into their M91s, but they were continuing to use original Russian hex receivers that, you know, some of them date back to the 1890s, World War One, and even once the winter and continuation wars began. You start to see some round receivers coming in as 9130s in Finn service, but they were virtually unaltered. So most of the guns that you're going to see that were totally rebuilt in Finland are going to have a hex receiver. And that would continue on all the way through the M39 series, which we'll get to. But yeah, this was the M91. They were used in the 1920s and 30s. And a lot of them are rebuilt as kind of an emergency measure in 1941, 42, 43, when Finland was at war, when the continuation war, and they just needed rifles. But this was essentially a thinned up 
1891 with a with a better heavier barrel put on and there were several barrel manufacturers some of them in Finland some of them overseas I think um, some came out of Belgium some came out of Austria and again there's excellent websites out there that can give you almost a blow by blow down to the you know 10 were bought here 100 there so I'm not going to try to repeat all that on video and waste time but check all those out I mean just go to Google but yeah this is the first in the true line of Finn Mosins. And we will get to a Russian video too. Well, we'll move on. Alright, our next Finn Mosin is an M27. Now, at first glance, this might look a lot like the M91 you just saw, but it actually has a lot of differences. The M27 wasn't the first I hate to say, it, it's basically a new rifle. They, they, they redid a lot of things on these. There was the, uh, the M91-24 and some other stuff. But this was the first concerted effort where they were going to make thousands of them. They were going to re-equip the entire military. They had some great ideas, they thought. And so they, they went at it. The first of these appeared around 1928. And this is actually a very early one if you look at the receiver date here, which I thought was kind of neat. So this is going to be one of the earliest uh, M27s. So what was different? Alrighty. Well, we'll start from the muzzle. Why not? <clears throat> First off, you'll notice it has this protected front sight. So the front sight is now different. It's got these ears here and here also has more of a, well this one has a Mosin, I've seen some more Mauser style, but it uses the same cleaning rod on this one. It has a Mauser style bayonet lug here, taking a more of a blade type bayonet. Now this front band is actually hinged. Now, originally these popsicles weren't here on the sides. They added these later, I believe it was in 1934, but I might be off by a year or two, to strengthen the weapon when it was being used with the bayonet because without these reinforcements they were having problems with it twisting and cracking. So they added these popsicles to give uh, more stability. There's an extra screw under them and then the screw here that holds these on. Hand guards pretty well unchanged. It's modified again. This uses a heavy barrel like the 91 does. And of course the front stock has to be spliced. Right here is the splice on this one where they put on new wood to an original stock. Rear sights are new. Very similar, but just uh, they're a different style. And a little more finely adjustable and everything. And of course they're no longer measured in arshins like they would have been in the Russian. They're, uh, they're in meters. Still has the hex receiver here. Again, the magazine and the trigger have been tuned. This one has more of a take up than the other one. but still a very clean break for a Mosin. Now this bolt, this is unique to the early M27s made before about 1933. I think they quit this sometime in 32. There are these little wings or flanges right here. And there's another one on this side if you look. And these go into corresponding slots in the receiver. Now what they were hoping to do was stabilize the bolt for even feeding into the receiver. All that. What they actually ended up creating was a great place for dirt and grime and snow and everything else to collect. And when it got collected in the receiver, that couldn't go forward. So a lot of soldiers replaced these bolts with with ones that didn't have the wings on them. So today, even if you find an earlier M27, it may or may not have the wings still on it. This one's lucky because not only does it have it, it's actually the bolt is serial matched to the rifle, so it's the original bolt, best I know. Now the other big difference are the sling swivels. Now again, they had several variations. Some of them just had the stock slots but a lot of them have these swivels here on the back that rotate 360 degrees. Now they had problems with sometimes the slings binding so on some models and that they're pretty not 
common. They put a side swivel on too that's more fixed. It goes through this the the old stock slot, and you can see the corresponding bar there that it goes through. I've seen these referred to as the ski trooper. I think that's a very informal name, but it, it works just to differentiate them from the other ones. So they've added this swivel up here to help keep the lower one from binding since it can't move. So I, I thought that was kind of a neat feature of this rifle, having the both swivels on it. But the M27 went into service. They immediately had put a few problems with them. You can read about it. The, the twisting when used in bayonet practice, yada yada, things like that. But um, they reworked them, they, they halted production around 34, re-tinkered you know, re with them. We're already thinking about getting rid of them, going to something else. They're so still making them in, in small batches, 35, 36, 37. They kept them around during the winter and continuation wars as they needed them. I mean, this was the standard issue frontline weapon of the Finnish Defense Forces. But people, they weren't real happy with them. And so they, a lot of them got used up and then kind of discarded. And, you know, they were, they, they were well used after two wars with Russia. So when you find them today, most of them are in that, you know, yeah, well, well used condition. But um, this is the finish in 27. There was also a carbine version, which is incredibly rare. And I do not have, and very few people do. But if you see one, it's definitely a unique piece, too. Well, we'll move on. And for our final Finn Mosin, we have probably the one that most of you are familiar with. This is an M39. This particular one isn't anything special. I, I picked it up years ago at a friend's shop, and just I thought about replacing it with different ones, but it, it works well. I mean, it's in good shape, and uh, yeah, kind of like it. But this one was made by uh, Sacco in 1944. The uh, M39 is kind of the final version of the Mosin adopted. Obviously, it was adopted in 1939. These started to just trickle into service when the Winter War began, but mostly in the Winter War, you're still seeing older M91s and M27s and other variants. By the Continuation War, these were becoming more common. So what is this? Well, it is a short rifle version. The M91 would have been a full rifle. The M27 you just saw is actually just a smidge shorter, maybe by two, three inches. Not, not really a short rifle, still has a barrel well over 25 inches. This one here is just right about uh, 25. Still a heavy barrel, they're, they're, they're liking that. Still have the protected front sight like on the M27. A little bit different styling to the protector, but still the same thing. Pretty wide front sight blade. Still has the hinged front barrel band with a Mauser style bayonet lug. Now they're using a Mauser style cleaning rod too with the longer head on it if you see. They've gone away with the popsicles. They've been able to get things stronger. This is a very heavy duty front stock still spliced down here heavier hand guard it has dual sling swivels side and bottom these are becoming standard finally so you can either sling it across your back or shoulder depending on which type of infantry or cavalry you are the rear sights have again been upgraded these are definitely the the more unique of all the Mosins Definitely more of a Mauser inspired style with the sliding here and um, that. Still built on a hex receiver. Lord knows when this one was originally made. <laughs> that uh, winged bolt idea is gone. They, they decided that wasn't workable in the M27. Again, they actually dropped that even halfway through its own production, so it definitely didn't carry over to the M39. Still a nicely tuned trigger. Still has fuller grooves in the stock. 
The magazine has been slightly re reworked to ensure it doesn't double feed and smooth feeding. The back here has a real nice big swell semi pistol grip. It actually kind of balls out. Really it's meant to very ergonomic. Fits the palm very nicely. Nice and thick back here. Very substantial stock. You've got an inleted side sling bar, much like on a lot of Xiaomi's. And then you've got a bottom sling swivel. Now these, um, most of these were made in the 1940s, mostly during the Continuation War. They remained in service until being phased out in favor of the Valmet RK-62 assault rifle, which is a Kalashnikov variant in the 1960s. Although I don't think some of them are retired up into the 70s, and I'm sure some of them are kept for marksman rifles because they are very accurate. So these had a pretty long service life, especially for a Mosin. If you want to know more about the RK-62, we do have a video on that. You can check it out. It also features the, the body L-35 pistol, another uh, Finnish famous critter there. But yeah, this was the final mass production standard issue version, and this replaced a bunch of guns in Finnish service. If this was the time when they finally standardized. They, they had kind of a hodgepodge of weapons before the M. 39, they eventually after the continuation war were able to pull most of the old uh, 91s and M9130s that they captured from Russia out of service and really standardized on this relatively handily sized, not too long, not too short. It's got some heft to it, but Finland's always been a fan of durable guns. They, they like weight on their guns, so you're not going to see a lot of real light guns. This is still chambered for the 7.62x54R cartridge. Now in Finland they called it the 762 by 53 and there are some differences, you know, and you'll also see some different markings on barrels like B's and D's. Again, there's a lot of resources out there so I'm not going to reiterate because I don't do this off notes, it's just kind of off my memory. So I don't want to say something and be wrong, you, you can check those out. Mostly just wanted to show you uh, some Finnish Mosins today. But, um, very nice guns. I got into these years ago when a uh, professor of mine at university uh, collected them and he had probably half a dozen and I kind of decided I liked them too and eventually picked a few up and kind of been done ever since. It definitely goes to show you that the Mosin design is not broken. If someone wants to take time and really tinker with it, the Mosin is actually a very nice, very accurate, can have a very nice trigger to it. So, you know, not all Mosins are Russian hastily produced wartime examples from 1942, or as we often call them, oh shit, Nazis guns. But, um, yeah, the Mosin really can be made nice, and Finland it shows that off very well. Well, this is Misha, and as always, thanks for tuning in. If you have any uh, comments or questions, please leave them below, and either uh, the cameraman or I will do our best to respond or help out, and uh, thanks for tuning in.